Now we should know that the fungi are eukaryotic organisms. The cell membrane of fungi, it is made up of ergosterol and the cell wall of the fungi, it is made up of a substance called as chitin. Okay. Morphological classification of fungi. Okay, so in the morphological classification of fungi, the first category is called as yeast and examples of yeast include Cryptococcus neoformans and Saccharomyces. Now why are they called as yeast? Now the special property, what makes them to be called as a yeast, yeast exists as unicellular organisms. Okay, now from them, a small bud starts to arrive. That means they are going to reproduce by this process called as budding. So you can remember this small thing that just came out, it's called as a bud and the process would be known as budding. So this is a special thing and the bud separates out later existing as another cell. So this is about the yeast. Okay, the second category we are going to call it as yeast-like organisms. So obviously, they are not the true yeast. They are copying the yeast, right? Yeast-like organisms. Okay. Candida would be an example of yeast-like organism. Now, why it is called as yeast-like? Because it's also a cell like this. And then what happens is, the buds start to grow on it but they do not separate out and they keep elongating like this. The buds keep elongating like this, they are not going to separate out and this would be called as pseudo-hyphae. Okay? This formation of pseudo-hyphae, since it is bud only, it is like a bud, right? this is called as yeast-like organism. Okay, so it's a classical feature of the organism called as Candida. So that was our second category. The first one called as the yeast and the second one called as the yeast-like organisms. The third category in this, it is known as molds. So molds are nothing but the filamentous fungi. The moles are nothing but the filamentous fungi and these filamentous fungi technically exist as hyphae. So example of moles include dermatophytes, mucor, aspergillus, rhizopus, penicillium, all these guys are included under this category. Okay. Now we will be remembering them by the mnemonic like a crazy man right in Hindi, Pagal Marth, okay, Pagal Marth. So who comes into this? Penicillium, Mucor, Aspergillus, Rhizopus and Dermatophytes. So these are the guys that are included under the category of molds. Okay, so now let's just have a look at the dimorphic fungi my friends. Dimorphic fungi they exist in two forms as the name suggests, dimorph, right, two forms. Now what are these two forms in which they can actually exist? See, technically what we have studied earlier, there are two forms of fungi, one called as a yeast, another called as a mold. See, yeast-like is just a copy of yeast, right doctors? So technically the original categories, to remember we can remember. To remember the fungal morphology easily, we can say one thing. The fungi are originally of two types. What are the two types? One is yeast, another is mold or filamentous fungi. Okay, so this is just for the remembrance sake. Some category is going to copy the yeast and it's called as yeast-like. So that means, let's not say it's a true category. The main two are yeast and molds. 
So other two categories in the morphology, either it's a mixture of both or they copy one of them. For instance, yeast-like copies the yeast. Dimorphic is no special. What is dimorphic? It's just existing in the two forms of fungi. What are the two forms? One of them is called as yeast and the other called as molds. Okay. So you can easily remember them by this mnemonic would have given here. Body heat changes shape pretty perfectly. So this mnemonic not only teaches you right the concept that these organisms change their shape because of our heat, because of our body temperature. But it's also reminding you of all the organisms in this list and which is an important question. So see here doctors what comes under this list. First the B stands for Blastomyces dermatitidis. Next the heat H stands for Histoplasma capsulatum. Also the name says, see although the name says it is capsulatum, it is actually not capsulated. Okay, it is the fungus called as Cryptococcus neoformans that is capsulated. Next, changes Coccidioides imitus. S for Sporothrix schenkii. Next, P for Paracoccidioides brasiliensis. And then lastly, the perfectly Penicillium marnifi. So these are all the organisms that are considered as dimorphic fungi. So what's the concept in them? When they're in the soil, let's say 25 degrees temperature, they would be existing as molds. But when they infect us, when they come into our body, they will be existing as yeasts. So in the last topic, we had seen that the fungi were divided based on their morphology. They were classified based on their morphology. But now we will be looking at a different classification. And this classification, doctors, it's based on reproduction of fungi. Based on the reproduction, the spores are divided into sexual and asexual. The sexual spores examples include basidiospores, ascospores, zygospores, right? And I told you they belong to these families according to their names. For instance, basidiospores, the family is basidiomycetes, right? like that ascospore, ascomycetes and then you have deuteromycetes as well. Next asexual spores, the examples include the cab and the cab is chlamydospores, chlamydospores, arthrospores and blastospores. Important fungi, they belong to this category called as deuteromycetes.